Hey guys, what's up? It's Brandon with Wagstaff Auto Detailing back with another auto detailing video. Now today's an exciting video. I'm going to give you guys some ideas on how to plumb your water tank. So this video is going to be including all of the little accessories and parts you need to plumb your water tank. I'm going to go through it step by step and we're going to show you how you can do it and just give you a few ideas on it. All right. Thanks for watching. Um, also, hey guys, if you're new to the channel, um, you're gonna, if, if, if auto detailing is your thing, you're gonna want to subscribe. We're gonna be building an auto detailing business from the ground up, and we're gonna be building a mobile auto detailing van from the ground up, and we're gonna film it step by step, and you're gonna see all of the tips and tricks from putting graphics on the van, from buying the materials to build the setup inside the van, from starting an LLC, getting business cards, um, going to the graphic shop, what to ask for, ideas about it, what to put on your van, and just building a clientele from the ground up, marketing the business and all that. So you're, you're going to want to hit that subscribe button because we got a bunch of exciting videos coming up. And it would do us a huge favor. And that, that would be a good way to support the channel because we are a new channel and all the all the subscribes, any all the support helps. Thanks a lot, guys. Let's get started. Okay, guys. So I just got back from Home Depot a few days ago and I purchased all of the items I'm going to be needing to do the plumbing. I'm just waiting for the fabricators to build a custom frame that's going to be a water tank frame, a hose reel frame, generator slide out, a couple shelves. And we're going to mount everything down and once everything's fitted, I'm going to start the plumbing process. But the idea of today's video, guys, is I wanted to kind of give you an idea of the accessories that you're going to need to do the plumbing. And I wanted to lay them all out and give you a close look at all the parts to give you guys some ideas of how you want to plumb your water tank. And there's not a lot of information about this on YouTube. Um, a lot of the professional builders, they don't want to show you all the ins and outs of this, guys, because they want you to come in and buy the whole package, have them build the frame, have them set up all the plumbing, have them set up all the electricity. Now, that's great. They do an awesome job. But guess what? That costs thousands and thousands it can be up to 20,000 plus to have them do everything for you now i for me i didn't want to spend that much i wanted to kind of gather all of the supplies myself and then from there use the professionals uh for what i really can't do myself and what I figured that I could do myself is I could actually build a wood frame, but for long term, you know, company investment, I wanted to kind of have the uh, a metal frame in case the van ever takes a crap and I want to um, and I need to, you know, um, take out the metal frame and put it into another van. So I figured the framing was a long-term investment. It was a good investment, even though it's incredibly expensive, guys. It's still upwards of $2,000 plus dollars to get some framework fabricated and powder coated and stuff. But anyways, let's get into the video finally. This is what I wanted to show you guys. I spent hours and hours at Home Depot gathering all of the supplies I needed, and it costs close to 300 plus dollars just for the accessories that you see here not for the pump the pump is 99 dollars. now if you're like me and you really want to um, prolong the life of your pump of your pressure washer then you you can get a pump but a lot of people they don't but i wanted to kind of just spend the extra money get a pump and 
have that extra power going to my Kranzel and maybe I'll get an extra little power out the pressure washer but if not it doesn't matter you know um this this pressure washer is going to be sitting way up high here so this pump this pump will will route the water up to the top and I'm even thinking about seeing if I could put my bucket filler on the other side of the pump so it actually fills my bucket up faster too so instead of it's just instead of it just being gravity fed but all right guys so here we go um just just i'm gonna give you all of the information that i can and in the following videos i'll give you more information as the plumbing gets handled so here's to start with this is a this is the um hose that i'm going with Let's see if that focuses in and uh it's seven eighths in outer diameter and five eighths in inner diameter and you can see that's a pretty big hole i wanted to go with a pretty solid line you know this 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 hole is smaller it came with the pump and um some guys go with a smaller line so you can see that this just goes right in there and it's it's a little more narrow i wanted more flow more water flow so i went with this one and that's one thing you guys are going to have to decide for yourself what uh tube what size tube do you want okay so there's about one to three sizes that you want to go with and um so that's the one i went with and if you do want a water pump let me discuss that for a second so here's the water pump right here guys and if you're not going to use the ones they come with then you're going to need to buy these this is um a garden hose size and this fits on that so i just changed that up all right so after you do that then you're going to want to put one of these on there and then that's how you plug in your hose and another thing about these little nipples here is some of they all look the same but some are meant for different things like the threading is what i'm talking about this threading right here actually goes with this metal threading so that one fits in there nicely like that with the, the metal because if you can see it's a it's here's another one here it's a wider thread and these ones have a more narrow threading so what i mean is you got wider space threading and more narrow these narrow ones fit in here so the plumbing can get a little confusing and that's why i wanted to make a video on it because it's not that confusing once you break it down like the way I'm about to break it down. So every time you guys do an action, which what I, what I mean by an action is like breaking the hose. When you got to cut the hose to separate something, you need to plug in a nipple. All right. So, for instance, here's the hose that'll go here. And then if I want it to go to this line, I got to cut the hose and then plug one more nipple. Okay. And that's how you got to do it. And like, for instance, when, when I'm cut, when I, when I have my valve coming out of my water tank, do I want my water tank to come out and directly do a 90 degree turn? 
or do I want to split it or do I just want to bring it straight out so there's a lot of options now these things are for the pressure for the pressure washer so when you want to bring the pressure washer out this is just a 90 degree elbow garden hose so this will plug in right into a pressure washer and when you're doing all the plumbing if you see the pressure washer it just goes straight so when you have your pressure washer up on a shelf you want this to go down because you can see I want my hose running down so you're gonna want one of these to bring your hose down or to the sideways or whatever you want to do but you definitely don't not want to get that because the alternative is is having your hose come out and then actually bending your hose and you don't want to restrict any of your flow so you don't want to bend your hose you want these elbows to do all the bending for you and these little guys, these are your valves. You're gonna want a bunch of these. And then also these are reducers. So for instance, here's a bulkhead for a, uh, this, this is a device that is used to make a water outlet in your water tank okay so it comes out like this and you see there's threading inside of it <clears throat> so when you got that so here's my outlet it doesn't plug in you see that so that's why you get the reducer so you got a reducer and then you got your elbow And then, this is what the inlet looks like. Okay, and I got my outlet over there on the other side. I would show it to you guys. It's not down here. I should have had it all ready for you guys. But, so, for, for my case, my, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to seal this water tank up. I don't even really want to see it. There's going to be a shelf on top. There's going to be, a, like, a wall down here. There's going to be some other little shelves and different things. And for the most part, what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and have a little opening here where I can come in and put a big uh, DI hose to fill up some of those water supply shops. But if I can't get into it and I want to just fill up with a garden hose, I'm going to drill into this tank and I'm going to install an inlet up here and I'll show you guys how that works. Uh oh, those things are heavy duty. It's all right. Ugh. Let's see here. So when you drill in your hose, when you drill into your water tank, You, you drill the hole that's as big as that right here. You plug this in from the inside of your water tank. And then it sticks out like that. And then once it's sticking out, then you put this back on. And once that's uh, back on, then you could put that and what i'm going to do is i'm going to put one of these on so it's coming straight out and then i'm going to put that or i could actually there's so many ways to do this too you guys like it's just 
never ending. Actually, I could just bring that outlet right out like that. So I'll have the hose coming out on the top to fill up. And then I put, what you do is at the end, at the end of the hose, you put one of these. This is going to be a, a garden hose. A garden hose can plug into right one of these. So that's going to look something like this. Whatever side of the garden hose you want, the male or the female side, you could have either one. So, so I'll have some length on this hose wherever I put that outlet and I'll be able to just plug it into the garden hose. And I bought the float. That's another thing. I have a float. It's an automatic shut off. So you don't even have to be watching the water level and you install the float inside. You put the, the float attaches to the inside of this. And when the water level comes up, the float mechanism floats to the top and it does a shut off on that. It closes the port. So that's kind of just some ideas. And here's all the equipment that, you know, all the supplies. And kind of got sidetracked. Let me see where I, where I was. So yeah, you guys, that's the, um, that's one of the ideas. So you can fill your water tank up with a garden hose and you can install your own outlet inlet. And, um, now when you're at the, the bottom here, when you're, um, you got your outlet to your pressure washer, you, there's two choices. You can have your outlet go into a T or you can go out this way if you're tied tight for room. And then the T can come over here after you run a little bit of line, you have some room along here. Then, so one part of the T goes to your bucket filler and the other part goes to your pump, which is going to go up to your pressure washer. So next I'll talk about the bucket filler. Now, do you want your nozzle to be at um, this side of the line? When you have a bucket filler, you're going to need a valve. So you can have it at this part or you can have it down at the end. So basically when you're filling, you can just hit the nozzle at the end and fill your bucket up or do you just want your your line to be with no valve and the valve over here so there's there's a lot of room to play with and at every point that you're going to cut your line and install a nipple and install a different device here to do different things you're going to always want to put one of these um, things here. I forgot what they're called. Hose clamps. <laughs> all right, hose clamps. So you're going to want all these hose clamps. You're going to want reducers. You're going to want valves. You're going to want elbows. And, you know, you want your T. And if you want to be real fancy with it, you want some nice metal ones for your pressure washer. Um, I bought two. So I believe I'm going to put one on each side. That's going to look pretty cool. And that's why this stuff gets pretty pricey. So do you want a lot of valves? You know, and do you want a lot of different functions? You want to have an extra way to fill up your water tank than just that big um, opening there? And do you want a, a pump to assist your pressure washer so 
there's a lot of decisions to make and there's a lot of little supplies you're going to need to do that and you know, you know like one of these and you're going to want a bunch of these hoses more you know better might as well have more lines than not enough like right here i pretty much looks like a lot of stuff but i'm probably just went overboard on maybe like a couple parts in fact i might even be missing a couple parts so um but yeah what you can do is make sure you save all your receipts and just go return all the stuff that you don't use and get your money back because guys can you believe it 520 some dollars for the water tank and then three four hundred dollars to do the plumbing including the uh and that who no, no one tells you it was going to be that pricey it was going to get that technical so yeah it can get real pricey and you could also save a little bit of money i i believe you can go with plastic instead of in this brass these are like nine dollars you can get them for like five bucks if they're plastic i believe and i think you can might you can do plastic here too and you might be able to find some cheaper line so there's a, a few ideas and to give you guys a broad overview of the preparation when you're about to do the plumbing for your water tank so stay tuned guys for the next video when we actually plumb it and then when we actually get to use it and test it out and all that stuff it's going to be a long process right now the van's about to get the graphics put on we're waiting for the fabricators to call us to um, give us the frame we're going to bring everything back and we're going to uh, assemble it ourselves and we're just we're like business is 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 busy too people are like calling us already you know we're already on google and we have a few clients but i'm having to put all this on hold right now why this build is is going so guys leave a comment like can you relate to having to put your business on hold to do this build because it's not easy it's it's long and tedious and um, I had to, I had a setup in here and I could have continued to operate with that setup. It was functional, but I knew that I was spending way too much time doing this and doing that. And I could go on and on. And I'm sure you guys can relate. I was reeling up my uh, pressure washer hose on my own. I was using a rechargeable, uh, wet dry vacuum and there it is right there. Pretty cool. Uh, milwaukee setup actually and uh i just knew that i was wasting my time and i was like i i i had to stop and finally make the change and we were going towards that uh way anyways we just had to take some breaks in between it couldn't just we couldn't just go full force into building this van it was step by step by step and i was lucky enough to in between to actually you know get my hands dirty get out there start detailing and you know just um get a feel for it um but yeah uh we also have a rental business too which is going to be part of the channel we're going to discuss how other side hustles can go in, in hand in hand with auto detailing. For instance, we have a small rental business. So with our fleet of rental cars, we're able to use this mobile setup to wash our fleet. So that helps out. And then that helps out with some side hustle when the business is a little bit slow. Um, and there's also little side hustles like um, being a driver for DoorDash and like you know you can there's a bunch of different things i've been a top dasher for doordash for going on three years um, i drive a prius and i pretty much maximized my profit out of that business and also with the business turo so we're going to go ahead and discuss how other side hustles can go hand in hand with auto detailing and um uh, but yeah guys so with that with the next video coming we will see some new progress
Thanks for watching, guys. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please hit that subscribe button, like, share. We really appreciate it. Have a good day.